so hello people of God I am excited as always to uh, be in your midst and to share and I want this word I always say this is going to be a quick word but this actually is is going to be a word that I'm going to actually just talk through with you a little bit and share with you what God put on my heart because it's really good and I just pray right now even in the name of Jesus that everything God wants to get across that it's going to get across so in my time with the Lord this morning um this month is starting off you know and I think this might be a little bit of my norm right where the month starts off with some processing as God is preparing me physically mentally spiritually for what he's about to do so that's how yesterday looked right and so when the Holy Ghost was talking to me right this is this is what I want to lead with because this is what God told me, right? One of the or the most important thing you can do right now for yourself is to to hear what God is saying to you, about you, for you, concerning you. Staying in your lane is the most important thing that you could do. It is the most important thing you could do, right? Even when you are receiving on a corporate level like now, right? The most important thing you can do before you get uh, on any any word or after the word is to is to ask the Holy Ghost, what were you saying to me, about me, for me? What part of this really needs to sink deep into my heart? What do I need to get? The most important thing that we need to be walking in every single day is asking God, what are you getting to me? What are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? That to ask God, right? To ask God himself to go lay before the Holy Ghost and petition him. What what are you saying to me? What are you clarity is going to be really important for us right now. And so as I was as God was talking to me about that, um the Holy Ghost had me in Matthew 13, right? And so in Matthew 13, we know that that's the parable of the sower. And there was a couple of things that really that the Holy Ghost really ministered to me there. One of those things is Jesus telling his disciples, right? You have a great advantage because I'm talking to you in parables, but then I can explain it, right? He said the prophets of old, godly men of old did not understand that. They did not know that, right? They did not know that. And Jesus said, you have the fact that I can tell you the parable, right? Which he does. And then I can break it down and I can explain it to you in very basic terms. And Jesus said to those of us that have an open and teachable heart, we'll get more and more revelation. So that was one thing. The second thing which really blessed me is Jesus talking about the harvest, right? And I believe for myself and maybe for some of you, I have been I have been receiving the harvest as, you know, something outside of me, something that's going to come to me, something that was independent of me. But when you read Matthew 13 and 23, the harvest is you. The harvest is you, right? The harvest is your life. And that really, that floored me, right? If you read Matthew 23, right? That is what Jesus says. To those of you that, that hear the word, that keep it, right? You will receive or you will have a, a harvest. And I, I probably need to read it exactly so I can give it, so I can give it its due diligence because that blessed me. Okay, so I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. So, as for the seed that fell upon good rich soil, it represents the hearts of people who hear and fully embrace the message of heaven's kingdom realm. Their lives, their lives bear good fruit. Some yield a harvest of 30, 60, or even a hundred times as much as was sown. This really blessed me because God had said to me, God had given me the rhema word that this is the new that is your life, right? God was telling to me, this is not, this is not that thing where you're like, you know, you have a new thing or this, you know what I'm saying? God was like, this is the new that is your life. And so when the Holy Ghost led me to Matthew 13 and particularly verse 23, their lives, their lives bear good fruit, right? So everything about your life is going to bear good fruit, right? Everything. That's the harvest. The harvest is your life bearing good fruit. That, I was like, oh my gosh. But that goes back to Jesus saying to me, 
Romania, what I'm telling you, I may not be telling the next person or the next person. So, so I can share with you something that maybe you're not getting anywhere else. Right. And all glory and honor goes to God. So that, that excited me. So the other place that God had me was in Luke one, particularly verse 38, where the angel has come to Mary and the angel has, has said to Mary that she's going to have a son and you know, the angel tells Mary how it's going to happen. And verse 38 is where the Holy Ghost had me because there, and I'm going to read it from the NIV version. Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. And I kept reading every version of that, right? I kept reading it like, um, the new American standard Bible records it as Mary saying, may it be done to me according to your word. And the Holy Ghost had me, and the reason why it's important for you to hear what God is saying to you, right, is because it is going to be your total agreement, your total alignment with that thing that's going to bring forth the harvest from you. Mm -mm -mm. Listen, when, when the angel said that to Mary, right, outside of what would be a normal, reasonable question, she's like, okay, well, I'm a virgin. I don't see how that's going to happen, you know, outside of that. Mary had no concerns. Mary had no questions. Mary didn't consider Joseph. Mary didn't consider, can you, can you, if I would have been Mary, right? I might have, can you do like a breakdown? Like, like what is going to happen? Is it going to be like some supernatural sperm? Like I might've been very practical, you know what I'm saying? Very natural about this thing. Like, it, like, like what exactly, right? Mary doesn't ask that. She just agrees with the word. She just agrees with the word, right? She falls face forward through faith into the word, right? And that is what God was telling me. Let me tell you, for God to do what he needs to do in your life, you can't give any account to natural circumstances. If you're sitting here and you're trying to figure it out and you're trying to make it make sense and you're trying to pray about this part and that part and Holy Ghost, you got to connect this to that or you got... You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. That's the realm of the natural. That's what the enemy wants to do. That's that. Listen, that's if the devil can get you to look at it, reason with it, validate it or entertain any part of God's truth and try to make it make sense. Then you, you, you've lost God. You, lo you can't make sense of what happened to Mary. You can't make sense of any part of the Bible. You can't, you can only receive it through revelation. You can't make it make sense. And I've said this on a previous video before, right? That's what, that is how the fall happened, right? The devil didn't shake, eat, the serpent didn't shake Eve and say, God is not telling you the truth. Believe me. No, he, he put a suggestion there. Eve took a look at the fruit and she agreed within herself. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's bad. Right. And so that, that blessed me, that blessed me because you can't make it make sense. You can't make it make sense, right? You have to take God at his word and you have to believe it and you have to hold on to it and you have to run with it. You can't entertain. You can't validate. That's how the enemy gets us even with stuff going on in our body. So what is that? Is that some, and sometimes we think that we're doing good by not receiving the big stuff, right? Like I don't receive the big stuff like cancer or all this stuff. It's the little stuff. It's the little stuff, right? It's the little stuff that the enemy may try to make you think, okay, that's a reasonable thing. It's a reasonable thing to not expect to be able to have a baby without a man, without, we know functionally how having a baby works. So it's a very reasonable thing that I just can't do this by myself. Like, like that doesn't happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that is what God was talking to me about. And let me tell you, when you get, when you get God to talk to you about you and you find and you own your rightful place and your rightful portion, nothing can stop the harvest from coming forth. Nothing can stop the harvest from coming forth, right? It, 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 nothing can. When you understand and you own within yourself, right? And let me tell you, oh God, when, when you do, when you do, Nothing can stop the harvest. No, no, nothing can stop the harvest, right? And that's what God was talking to me about. God was talking to me about, about my rightful place, my rightful portion, what belongs to me, right? The Holy Ghost has been talking to me a lot about faith, right? And 
he started to talk to me when, when Mary believed the angel right it was done unto her like she instantaneously conceived Jesus and we know that because when she goes to see Elizabeth right John the Baptist responds to Jesus already being there by leaping in um, Elizabeth's womb right and so I just want to talk to you in that regards right I want to talk to you about I don't think that there's really a, 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 a flow or a, this is just what God was saying to me, right? God was talking to me about me. God was talking to me about my rightful place, about my rightful portion. God, and let me tell you, and, and this is what I mean when I talk about hearing it for you, right? Because listen, we're in the hour that the enemy is like, I may not get a lot of agreement, so I got to just run with what I can get. I gotta just, I just gotta use what I can get. So if I can just get them to reason with it, for them to entertain it. You know, sometimes even in our prayers, we validate it, right? We pray, oh Lord, I know this thing is not working out. Oh Lord, I know this thing is ugly, but I know you can fix it. You through your prayer, you're agreeing with the problem. So many times I hear people praying and they are praying the problem, even though they don't think that they are. They are praying the problem, right? Uh, uh, God, I just want you to fix it. Not God, I thank you because you fixed it. God, I thank you because I have, there is clarity coming to me. There is resolution for this thing. I don't know how, when, and where, but this thing is worked out. This thing is worked. I'm not going to worry about it. Listen, this thing is worked out, Lord, and I thank you. Listen, that's what Mary said. Listen, she didn't even ask, is somebody going to talk to Joseph and what's going to happen here? No, be it done unto me. Be it done unto me. Healing, be it done unto me. Listen, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Th be it done unto me according to your word. What is the word saying? What is the word saying? What is the word saying? If you are still trying to figure it out, if you having sleepless nights, listen, cast that thing on God and keep it moving. Keep it moving. Lord, I can't figure it out, but I know I'm not stuck here. I know I'm not stuck here. I know I don't just have to figure this thing. You, you're trying to do the work for God. You're trying to do the work for God. Even in our prayers, we are praying the problem. We are praying the problem. And we are in a time where... And I, I, I spoke about agreement a while ago, but I'm telling you more than ever for what God wants to do for us, we cannot even entertain. We cannot even entertain any small talk about, we can't. We can't, we can't even entertain it. We can't reason with it. We can't try to validate it. We can't, right? We, we can not. It is like that story in the book of Acts when that snake bites Paul and Paul just shakes it off. Like, not, you, you understand what I'm saying? That's what some of y'all need to be doing, right? There are some things God is saying, listen, you don't even need to, to pray about it. You don't even need to entertain it. You need to shake that thing off and keep it moving. Like, you know what? Because it's just there to distract you from this bigger thing that God is trying to get to you. That, that's really what you're, you're sitting here thinking this thing that you're praying about is really your problem. And that thing is just trying to sh trying to keep you from the fullness and the completeness. Right. You're mm. that's what God had to tell me. That's what God had to tell me. Like, like, like God had to talk to me about, listen, when I say life goes well for us, life goes well for us. So if there is anything that is showing up and it does not look like life going well for you, you need to submit that thing to the word of God, right? I'm going to pick you up and I'm dumping you right now at the feet of Jesus. Anything, stop losing. Like, like I keep y'all losing sleep. Y'all worrying. Y'all no, God has worked this thing out. Life goes well for me. That's not a suggestion. There, there's not even any hope in that. That is a declaration of faith. That's what Mary said. Not okay, well, yeah, let's work it out then. Make it do what it do. That's not what Mary says. That's not what Mary says. Listen, I'm telling you, let it be done unto me according to your word. Let it be done unto me. You understand what I'm saying? Let it be done unto me according to every single thing you just said to me. So this is what God wanted me to put in front of you. Um, and I pray that this blesses you because I'm telling you what God is doing 
in the midst of all of these different words and everybody is pulling people this place and that place, I'm going to again remind you the most important thing you can do is to hear and to see and to know what God is saying to you about you. And then you need to have the faith and the agreement and the alignment to receive that thing and to walk in that thing. So have a blessed, uh, what's today, July 2nd, 2020. We are officially over into the second portion of 2020. So listen, it is well with my soul and I pray that it is well with yours.